As I was mentioning, uh, today we have the privilege of installing new elder and deacon, and uh, we are so grateful for that. We are also very grateful for those who are outgoing from that office. Uh, this time around, we have uh, Jared uh, DeYoung, who is uh, leaving office, uh, and uh, not, you know, preemptively or badly or anything. He's just retiring for the time being, yes. And uh, this, this is true for all of our office bearers who are leaving. And uh, Clarence DeYoung is uh, done his... <laughs> Dykema? Yeah, Clarence DeYoung, Dykema, whatever. It starts with the same letter, right? <laughs> We're all brothers and sisters in the Lord, right? We can all be DeYoungs. DeYoung at heart, anyways. <laughs> no? <laughs> We don't want to be DeYoungs. I, I look up to you so much, Jared. Sorry, that's, I, I was laughing, but I, I do look up to you. <laughs> but <coughs> anyway, Clarence, Clarence Dykema, and then also Cole Verberg, uh, who is not a DeYoung either. Um, but uh, we are so grateful for their service. In the, uh, at this time, however, I would uh, welcome our new office bearers to come forward and uh, to be part of this ceremony. So John Prosper is coming forward uh, for elder, and, uh, and Sid Dykema uh, is coming forward for deacon. And uh, so here the words of the Lord and the teaching of the Lord on the offices of elder and deacon. Brothers and sisters, today we celebrate God's gift of faithful leadership for his people. We joyfully thank him for elders and deacons who have served and served well and completed their terms of office, and we praise him for providing their successors. In the office bearers of the church, we see the love of Christ for his people. As the Lord of the church, he appoints leadership by his spirit. He equips them so that believers may grow in faith, develop disciplined Christian living, serve others in selfless love, and share with all the good news of salvation. He taught us the spirit of true leadership when he said, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first among you must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and gave his life as a ransom for many. Matthew. Elders serve by governing the church in Christ's name. <clears throat> they received this task when Christ entrusted the apostles and their successors with the keys of the kingdom in Matthew 16, verse 19. Elders are thus responsible for the spiritual well-being of God's people. They must provide true preaching and teaching, regular celebration of the sacraments, and faithful counsel and discipline while keeping in confidence those matters entrusted to them. And they must promote fellowship and hospitality among believers, ensure good order in the church, and stimulate witness to all people. Deacons serve by showing mercy to the church and to all people, they received this task in the early church when the apostles designated special persons for the work of mercy in Acts 6 and 2 Corinthians 8 and 9. In Christ's name, the deacons relieve victims of injustice. By this, they show that Christians live by the spirit of the kingdom, fervently desiring to give life the shape of things to come. Deacons are therefore called to assess needs, promote stewardship and hospitality, collect and disburse resources for benevolence, and develop programs of assistance. They are also called to speak words of Christian encouragement, 
Thus, in word as well as deed, they demonstrate that the care of the they demonstrate the care of the Lord Himself. These tasks of elders and deacons call for believers who are Christ-like, exercise who are mature in the faith, and who exercise their offices with prayer, patience, and humility. Now, we intend to ordain elders and deacons to install them for terms of service in this congregation. Those appointed to the office are of elder are John Prosper, and those appointed to the office of deacon are Sid Dykema. In addition, uh, John Lalonde has volunteered to stay on for another year as well, for which we are also very grateful. To express your acceptance of these offices, you are asked, as you are standing here and in the presence of God and his church, to answer the following questions. Do you believe that in the call of this congregation, God himself is calling you to these holy offices? Do you believe that the Old and New Testament are the word of God? the only infallible rule of faith and life? Do you subscribe to the doctrinal standards of this church, rejecting all teaching which contradict them? And do you promise to do the work of your offices faithfully, in a way worthy of your calling and in submission to the government and discipline of the church? John, what is your answer? Amen. Sid, what is your answer? Amen. Thank you. God, our Heavenly Father, who has called you to these sacred offices, guide you by his word, equip you with his spirit, and so prosper your ministries that his church may increase in name and be praised. Amen. This is our charge to the elders, and I would invite all of our elders to stand at this time, to receive again this charge, not Jared, and, but those who are currently here. Excellent, wonderful, thank you. I charge you, elders, to guard yourselves and all the flock to which, of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. Be a friend and Christ-like example to children. Give clear and cheerful guidance to young people. By word and example, bear up God's people in their pain and weakness and celebrate their joys with them. Hold in trust all sensitive matters confided to you. Encourage the aged to persevere in God's promises. Be wise counselors who support the pastor. Be compassionate, yet firm and consistent in rebuke and discipline, knowing script know the scriptures which are useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Pray continually for the church. Remember at all times that if you would truly give spiritual leadership in the household of faith, you must be completely mastered by your Lord. I charge you, deacons, and I would invite the deacons to stand now who are here, if you're able. Thank you. The elders may be seated, seated except for John. I charge you, deacons, to inspire faithful stewardship in this congregation. Remind us that from everyone who has been given much, much will be expected. Teach us to be merciful. Prompt us to seize new opportunities to worship God with offerings of wealth, time, and ability. Realize that, the benevolent, that benevolence is a quality of our life in Christ and not merely a matter of financial assistance. Therefore, minister to rich and poor alike both within and outside the church. 
weigh the needs of causes, and use the church's resources discerningly. Be compassionate to the needy. Respect their need for dignity. Hold in trust all sensitive matters confided to you. Encourage them with words that create hope in their hearts and with deeds that bring joy into their lives. Be prophetic critics of the waste, injustice, and selfishness in our society. And be sensitive counselors to the victims of such evils. Let your lives be above reproach. Live as examples of Christ Jesus. Look to the interests of others. Congregation, would you please rise? <clears throat> I charge you, people of God, to receive these office bearers as Christ's gift to the church. Recognize in them the Lord's provision for healthy congregational life. Hold them in honor. Take their counsel seriously. Respond to them with obedience and respect. Accept their help with thanks. Sustain them in prayer and encourage them with your support, especially when they feel the burden of their office. Acknowledge them as the Lord's servants among you. Do you, congregation, Pledge to receive them as you have been charged. We do, God helping us. Amen. Let us pray. Our merciful Father in heaven, th we thank you that you have provided faithful and gifted people to serve as elders and deacons. As these new office bearers assume their responsibilities, fill them with your spirit, endow them with your wisdom, and grant them strength. Make them faithful workers in your vineyard. Under their guidance, may your church grow in every spiritual grace, in faith which is open and unashamed, and in the committed service that promotes your reign in the world. Help them to perform their duties with enthusiasm and humility. In their work, Grant them a sense of sustained awe, which is rooted in daily adoration of you, their Lord. Through them, may your name be honored and your church be served. Help us, your people, to accept them gladly. Encourage them always and respect them for the sake of your precious Son, our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, everyone, brothers and sisters, and thank you so much, John and Sid, um, and all of those who have served as office bearers, past and present. You may return to your seats, and you may be seated, brothers and sisters. It is always good to remember, and brothers and sisters, you should know this, that those charges and those words that we have shared are not simply dead words that we say once as part of a form. We go through uh, m multiple times a year something called uh, mutual censure, which sounds really kind of ominous almost, but basically it is a time where as office bearers, elders and deacons and pastor, we remind ourselves of the charge that we have been given and the oaths of office that we have taken, and we check in with one another about uh, those things. How are they going? How are we doing? Are we doing what God has called us to do? Now, of course, elders and deacons and pastors are no more perfect than anyone else on this earth, uh, but we check in with one another and seek to hold one another accountable, not only with that formal process a few times a year, but also as we go through lives together, as we meet each month and we check in with one another, it is part of our job and our joy our responsibility 
and our privilege. And so please do seriously hold up your elders and deacons as they continue in the work that they have been given. But also let us remember that ultimately our foundation is not our elders and deacons nor our pastor, but our foundation is Jesus Christ our Lord. He is the church's one foundation. Let us sing together, let us worship together with the church's one foundation. And if you would like, I would invite you to stand again for that if you are comfortable. <laughs> 